why is the Russian Federation sidelined as an eternal enemy by the entire Western world, in spite of them belonging to the same ethnicity and religion? They even fought on the same side in the world wars. Now, why is there such an enmity or rather a hatred amongst the or ordinary folks of these European countries towards Russia? And weren't they better off being allies of Russia considering their own national interests instead of facing a constant threat from it? So to understand this situation, we have to again look at history, the past thousand years of history. The past thousand years of history, if you look at it from a big picture perspective, it's a history of constant tribal warfare in Europe, ethnic strife. Whether it's the Balkan regions, whether it's the Austro-Hungarian region, uh, Romania, Wallachia, the Ottoman Empire was involved for a very long period of time. Uh, the Saxons, the, the German principalities, the Russian Empire, which was for some time, for a significant amount of time, under the Rus under the Mongol yoke, the Franks, the Merovingians, the, the English, the Spaniards, the Portuguese. It's a constant story of ethnic strife, ethnic hatred. I did not even speak about the Italians and so on. And historically, there's been a major force, one major force in Europe, which is the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican. Right? And they have typically uh, lorded over Europe. Now, the thing is this. The Russians are not quite the same ethnicity as the, as the rest of Europe. Uh, Europe, Western Europe sees Russia as an Eastern, as an Eastern entity. It, the Western Europe sees Russia as part of the East, ethnically, culturally, etc. Even the Russian religion, the Russian Orthodox Christianity is very different from the Christianity that's practiced in, in other parts of Europe. It's way more traditional. There are lots of elements of paganism in that. Yeah, below the surface. So that's how it is. Uh, and uh, even from an ethnic perspective, uh, the Russians have a lot of, uh, what would you call it? Mongol blood or Turkic blood. Lots of them. Yeah. So it's a Russia has been a country that's always expanded eastwards and they've had a lot of dealings in Siberia and Eastern Asia, Eastern Eurasia. And they have intermingled with lots of peoples, nomad, nomadic peoples, etc., the so called Tatars and so on, who lived in these regions. And over the centuries, these peoples have intermingled. Lots of Russians consider themselves to be Tatars, even they don't look, even if they don't look Eastern Asian at all. Yeah. Uh, I can think of uh, what was that? Uh, there were two siblings, tennis players, uh, of a male and a female, uh, who were both Grand Slam champions. I forget their names, uh, but uh, yeah, they, they are Tatars and lots of other people. So Russia is a melting pot of East and West. It's more of East than West, right? So uh, ethnically, they are, the ethnicity is different. The Europeans consider Russians to be part of the East. Religion is also different. It's a very very orthodox and conservative form of Christianity with pagan elements. And if you look at the various conflicts that have happened in Europe, Russia has always has always been kind of an outsider. And as Russia expanded in the 19th century, became more powerful, and there were periods of expansion during the times of Catherine the Great, Peter the Great, Ivan the Terrible, and so on. So Russia has always been seen as a threat, an outside threat to Europe. It's always been that way. Even in the world wars, uh, Russia was uh, Russia bled a lot. For let's go to the Second World War. The Russians and the Nazis had a brief agreement, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, which happened in uh, 1939 or something like that. Yeah, it held for a couple of years, and at that time, Russia was uh, technically on the side of the Nazis, on the side of Hitler. And the rest of Europe saw Russia as, as well, the enemy. And it's only when uh, Hitler launched his disastrous Operation Barbarossa that Russia became part of the Allies. And that was a disaster. It was almost a success. The Nazis came to the gates of Moscow, but eventually they were, they were wiped out by the Red Army at the, at the expense of, of millions of lives and oceans of blood. So that's how it was. So Europe... We see it as a very civilized, stable place. It's not the case. The First World War and the Second World War were essentially the same conflict, a 30-35 year conflict. And I call it the European Tribal War. That's what it is. Europe has always been a place of ethnic hatreds, old vendettas, 
Look at the Balkans. Look at the history of uh, the, how the French and the Germans and the Italians, the Spanish, the British, they have always fought each other. Lots of petty jealousies and rivalries, all vying for the same piece of the pie. Even in the era of colonialism, they were fighting each other for pieces of other pies. And that's how it is. So overall, if you study history, you will see that the Europeans, especially the Western Europeans, have always seen Russia as, as an outsider, as an Eastern power, as a backward power. They've always considered Russia to be backward. And Eastern. East and backward is more or less the same thing in the minds of the Europeans. So that's how it is. And even when you look at uh, the pronouncements and, and the overall um, statements of Dr. S. Jayashankar from a, from a geopolitical perspective today, it's clear that he does not view Russia as part of the West. Russia is part of the East. And the Russians too are way closer to India than they are to any part any part of Western Europe and so on, even today or, or in the 20th century. So there's, it's always been that way. And uh, yeah, so that's the situation overall. And there are ethnic <laughs> conflicts and hatreds. Europe is full of these ethnic hatreds. It's all, that's how it is. So that's what I can explain in brief. I would encourage you all to study history because that makes things more clear. Uh, that's that's a lot to unpack. You can have a one year, uh, two semester course that will touch upon these things in, in, in a little in a little bit of depth, and still it won't be enough. So that's how big this thing is. But overall, Europe sees Russia as an outside force, as an eastern force, as an, as a backward country, and something to be subdued and something to be scared of, rather than something to be embraced. That's how it has always been, always.